So guys, getting back into Nightwing, this is Nightwing number 75. And guys, this issue, Nightwing is back. I know, you're probably like, wait, this is a Nightwing comic. Hasn't he been in his comics recently? No, ever since issue number 50, actually ever since two years ago, Batman number 55 and Tom King's Batman Run, you saw pretty much KG Beast, he shoots Nightwing in the head, and then Nightwing gets amnesia, he becomes Rick Grayson, a guy who doesn't remember being Nightwing, and he's just a thug now, right? Now, Rick Grayson met this girl, which is uh, B or Beatrice, that's her real name, and they became a couple, Rick Grayson went against the talents, Core Vows, then we had Joker War, right? Which Joker War, what we saw, guys, was Joker came in to Bloodhaven, or actually mostly Gotham, and to control Nightwing, right? To control Rick Grayson, and became Dicky Boy. Now, that's when um, Dicky Boy became like an adversary to the Bat family, but eventually Batgirl, with the help of Batman, came in, actually Red Hood and Tim Drake as well, beat Dicky Boy, Joker and Punchline got away, and you can find out the, that whole outcome and what happened to them in the Joker War finale. I'll just link down below the Joker War playlist so you guys can find out what happened with them. But we saw Rick Grayson be no more. Now it's Dick Grayson. Now it's Nightwing. He's back. And Batman number, I think it was 99. Yeah, Batman number 99, Nightwing actually got the costume back, and he's actually in the main title once again. So in this issue, we're going to see how Nightwing like how he gets back into the Bat family. Like, yes, he's Nightwing. Yeah, that's cool. But he has a talk with Batgirl. He finds out that Alpha is dead, which that's a big part of this issue. That's actually kind of emotional, guys. It's actually really good. And the ending is a shocker. So you don't want to miss out on this issue, right? But yeah, guys, you're right. Let's dive into Nightwing number 75. We begin with Donna Troy and Garth walking into a room and meeting Dick Grayson once again. Dick Grayson's back. He's no longer Rick Grayson. Now, that's what Donna Troy says. You're back. And that's when uh, Dick looks. He says, Donna, Garth, good to see you. And Garth says, all you can say is good. And Donna says, you're back to being Dick Grayson again. You should be thrilled. And that's when she hugs him. And she says, I certainly know I am. And you're absolutely 2% certifiably you, right? And that's what Dick says. Memory banks are fully restored and ready to go. And Garth says, our time as kids, Robin, Aqualad, and Wonder Girl included. And that's when Dick says, the earliest days of the Teen Titans. All there, which I appreciate. Now, Donna, she sits on the bed. And that's what Garth says, best times ever. Kind of wish we'd held on to that, as opposed to the Tempest Nightwing gigs we have now. And that's what Dick says, not sure I want to be 13 again, Garth. I enjoy the occasional beer, you know? And Donna says, if you try and get Garth and Mia buy you a beer, it'd be a our pleasure. She's like, you know what? If you're down for it, let's go get a beer. But that's what Dick says, you're on. Being out of work and all, well, I'm tapped out. As it is, Bruce is covering this hotel. And Garth says, why don't you stay at the manor? Two swimming pools, indoor and outdoor, as I recall. And that's what Dick says. Bruce asks, but I still feel a bit weird. I mean, despite the fact that I remember my life again, I still feel kind of adrift. Like I still have to figure out exactly who I am. And Donna pulls out her cell phone. She says, I have just a thing that will help you. And she hands her phone to him and has a picture of the old Teen Titans. You see Raven. You see Arsenal, which was actually Speedy back then. You see Wonder Girl. You see Robin. You see Wally West Kid Flash. You see Beast Boy, Starfire. You see Garth. Now, that's, that's when Donna says, the world first saw you as Batman's sidekick. We saw you as a rock. Without Robin, the Titans don't last two weeks. Now, that's what she says. Like Garth said, best times ever. And Garth says, how about you throw on the Nightwing gear and we swing by Titans Tower for old times sake. Bring pizza and give the new kids a thrill. That's what Donna says, no beer, they're underage. And that's what Garth says, we'll stash it behind the tower for later. Grab the suit and let's go. That's what Dick says, look. I'm back and all, but that doesn't mean Nightwing is. I have stuff that I need to work out. Now, that's when we go to Moscow, Russia, and it's a Tuesday. Now, that's when we see uh, KG Beast, he's in this bar, he says, one more. Now, the bartender says, you have had enough, Anatoly, any more and there'll be trouble. And KG Beast says, in that case, not one more, two. And that's when the bartender says, as you wish, comrade. That's when we have all these people surround KGBs, who are pretty much other different guys in Russia, right? And they says, is that truly Anatoly Armist? The great Anatoly, the killer, Russia's greatest assassin, the claw that cannot miss until he is torn off by the children. And that's when this guy goes up to Anatoly's 
pretty much his ear and says, expert marksman, capable of hitting anything. And another guy comes by and said, Hurry shot a bird's tail feather off from 30, 300 meters. Another guy says, Do you know what he sh uh, could not shoot? The bird he missed, you mean. And that's when they say, The American Nightwing. And they say, Graced him on the side of the head instead of putting the bullet between his eyes, dead center, as a true assassin would. And they said, You shamed your country, Antoli. Shamed us all. Time for you to retire, old man. Now, Antoli just keeps drinking his drink. He's just listening to us all. And they continue to say, I suggest you do us all a favor and commit suicide, shoot yourself, except that would probably miss. And they start laughing. That's when Antoine turns around and stabs this guy in the uh, chest, kills him on the spot. And they say, what? And that's when Antoine gets up and just starts killing these guys one by one, stabbing them in the chest, stabbing them in the head, getting a beer bottle and smacking across the guy's head. They all fall on the ground dead. And KGB says, listen well, comrades. I am not just Anatoly, I am more, much more, and continues to walk away. When your woman mourn your deaths, they should forever curse the name of the KG Beast. Now, that's when we shift to Wednesday in Gotham City, and Dick Grayson says, well, what do I do now? And Batgirl says, clean up Dewey, bow ring. And that's what Nightwing says, true, but it has to be done. A few of the Joker stray occultes are still on the loose. So, now yes, if you don't know this at your after the Joker War, so there's a few clowns, a few like henchmen of the Joker still out in Gotham City. So Nightwing and Batgirl just patrolling the city, taking down these clowns. Now, that's a Batgirl and Nightwing land on pretty much the ground, right? And Batgirl says, so the job falls to Batgirl and, and that's when Dick says, don't say it. And Barbara says, this is so wrong. And Dick says, how so? She says, you're suit. And Dick says, haven't worn one ages. I hate neckties. That's when we see these clowns on motorcycles coming by. And they say, the boss might be God, but we carry on his name. Long live the Joker. Now, that's what Batgirl says. That isn't the suit I'm talking about. You know it. And Dick says, you mean the wingsuit? Let's just say, I'm not right. He smashes these different clowns in the head with his sticks. Now, that's what Batgirl kicks a clown in the face. She says, that's ridiculous. Do you see who we're fighting here? And she says, Joker henchmen. Remnants of his uh, posse. That's when these clowns say, toasty time, girly. And she throws a batarang and says, if that doesn't prove the need for Nightwing, nothing will. She takes out this clown and his motorcycle, and that's what Dick, he takes this gun away from this clown, hits it, uh, this clown on the side of the head, and he says, Call me Nightwing, Nightbright, uh, Brightwing, or, or whatever. The point is that I'm here, and always will be. Now, you saw these clowns are defeated on the ground, and Dick says, Everyone assumes I was miserable while I was away, but the truth is, I was happy. And Backer says, I don't think it's possible to be happy if you're, not, if you're denying the essence of who you are. I'm no therapist, but it seems to me that real happiness doesn't happen without being true to yourself, which means you have to be Nightwing. Now, Dick says, not sure I agree. All I know is that for right now, this is how I'm going to roll. Look, I know Barbara will want what's best for me, but that's when another voice starts speaking. We don't know who this is yet. We find out later, but this voice says, but you're concerned. It might not be what you want. Now, we go to Thursday, 200 miles northwest of Gotham City. Now, this person says, as KG Beast is in this helicopter, they say, we are almost at the drop point, comrade. At this altitude, no one will detect us. That means the time has come for me to go. And that's when we see KG Beast. He jumps out, he hits his parachute, he lands in this forest, and he starts walking. We see this really cool image of him just walking up through this forest. And he says, the fools in the bar criticize my aim. And that's when we see this, this car come by. In this car was this old lady and this old uh, man, right? They're just driving by, and the old woman says, Henry, something's in the road. And Henry says, it's a person. Could have crashed, might even need help. But we see KG Beast. He shoots, just nonstop, and kills these elderly people. It's pretty messed up, guys. Kills them, and he says, my aim is fine. And he takes them to the other car and drives off to Gotham City. Now, we go on Friday. And we see more clowns, but this time it's Nightwing and Batman fighting them off. Now these clowns say, did you think we lost him? For sure. Now, that's when the voice that we don't know who is talking yet says, perhaps Bruce has the answers you're looking for, Richard. Now, Dick says, not when it comes to life management. And this voice says, that seems harsh. We see Batman, he says, I thought this would be over by now. How many of these clowns did the Joker recruit? And Dick says, oh, come on, it's Friday. Think of it like bowling night. And these guys are the pants. Now, they throw all these battery rakes, take out these different clowns. That's what Batman says, eh. And these clowns says, 
use the flamethrower with Glozo Toy Shop. And Glozo takes this flamethrower, it's just fire in the Batman. It says we can't make Batman pay for putting down the boss. But Batman punches this clown, takes him out, and Batman says, since we have the time to relax, what's with the outfit? And Dick says, you too? This is getting old. He takes out another clown and says, look, it's my call, no one else's. And that's when this voice in the background says, remember that Bruce, Barbara, and the rest of your friends missed you and only want what's best for you. Now, that's when Dick continues to talk to Batman. He says, I do not have to fit your concept of what I'm supposed to wear. We see this clown begin to get away. He's just fleeing. Now, Batman says, all I want is for you to be whole. Now, that's when Dick says, who's to say I'm not? I feel fine. We see Batman, Nightwing, jump out into the sky with this flash of lightning. And Batman says, if you say so, and Dick says, I hate when you do that. And Batman says, do what? And Dick says, get all passive aggressive. Your, if you say so, really means you don't think I'm fine. And Batman throws a bat ring, he says, if you say so. And Dick says, I give up. And that's this clown, which, who was trying to get away, gets hit by the bat ring, and he's defeated. Now, Batman says, no one wants you to give up. We want you back in the game. And Dick says, I am. You just need to accept that I... This place, you wanted this to happen. You engineered this. Chase the clouds into this direction so I'd end up in this very spot. This is where the Joker forced me to fight Batgirl. Why is it still standing? And Bound says GCP hasn't finished its investigation. Still running fingerprints to identify the various clowns that were here. And you see the Nightwing costume in the distance. Now, that's when Dick says that costume. You returned it. And maneuvering me here just so I put it on. And Batman says, uh, yes. And that's when he looks. Now, we see Dick, he says, I'm different than Bruce. I want to live a balanced, happy life. Now, the voice says, despite the fact that you two share a past ruin and tragedy, I would like that for you as well, Richard. Now, that's when Batman looks at Dick, right? And Dick says, please, you don't need to re resort to tricks to get me to do what you want. You and Barbara need to realize that I already have the life I want. And Batman says, if we're really being honest, neither, neither of us do. Not without Alfred. Now, Dick puts his hand on his chest. He says, I like to think he's here. Has been. Every step of the way. And we find out that this voice who's talking to Dick is actually Alfred. Now, Alfred says, unlike Bruce, you did allow those tragedies to pull you into the abyss of darkness. Now, Dick, at Alfred's grace, says, but I should have been there for you, Alfred. I would have, if I had listened to when you came to Bloodhaven to bring me home. But I ignored you, treated you like dirt, and walked away. For that, I am terribly sorry. Sorry. And we see Alfred behind him. Now, that's when Dick and Deuce say, I hope you understand that I didn't recognize you. Didn't remember how important you were to me. That you raised me when Bruce took me in. You must have been hurt by the way I disregarded you. Set you packing without so much as a hug or a handshake. Now, Dick um, begins to cry. He says, that's the last time I saw you alive. The last memory of me must be, good God, how I must have hurt you. When all you ever did was care for me. And that's when Alfred says, oh, Richard, I could not quarrel with your stay in Bloodhaven. Your fondness for Beatrice was quite apparent. It occurred to me that it might even be healthy for you to walk your own path, free of Bruce's influence. After all, my only objective was is, and always will be, your happiness. Alfred continues, Now your memory is back. The only roadblock to your complete re restoration to having the life you want is you. And that's when Dick says, I fell in love, Alfred, with B. She's special. Why can't Bruce and Barbara realize how fortunate I am? Alfred says, You want to go a life with her. That's why I've always wanted for Bruce, but it seems to forever elude his reach. You're not him, Richard. You can make this work. Now, Dick looks at the tombstone of Alfred and says, I like to think you'd tell me it's possible, Alfred. Frankly, I'd give anything to talk to you again, to erase the fact that the last time we spoke, I treated you like a total and complete stranger. All I can hope is that you understand. Somehow, I think you do. And Alfred puts his hand on Dick's uh, shoulder, and Dick wipes the tears away. Now, that's a Batman in the present day. On this Friday, says, still with me? And Dick says, just thinking about Alfred. And Batman says, as do I, all the time. And Batman says, the man knew us better than we could ever know ourselves. He understood the price this life can take away. And he prayed that we would not have to pay that price. Now, Batman says, impossible. 
Happiness, certainly, if it's of the house with white picket fence variety, is not an option for us. Now, Dick says, can't say that I'd ever truly agree with that. Now, he takes off his mask. He says, Alfred felt that your life was self-imposed isolation and denial wasn't necessary. He saw me as different and encouraged me to break free from that abyss. Gavin says, you can try, but it doesn't work that way for anyone. Now, Dick says, Alfred would say I would have someone in my life and uh, be Beatrice and Bounce says, so that's what's holding you back. You're afraid that being Nightwing will cost you Beatrice. Now, that's what Dick, with the Nightwing costume behind him, says, I guess that's true, even though Alfred would tell me otherwise. I can almost hear him saying that now. Now, we ship to Saturday in Bloodhaven, and we see Hutch, he's fighting off against these different robbers at this museum. That's when Hutch says, thousands of cool things to do in this town, and the best you losers can come up with is literally a museum, and these robbers say, money's money, masked man, don't matter how you get it. And Hutch throws these robbers at each other, and says, does to me, and the law. And this robber says, who the heck are you? And that's when Hutch says, Nightwing. And the robber says, more like Deadwing. But that's when we see the real Nightwing, Dick Grayson, comes swinging in and kicks this robber in the face. Now, that's when he says, about that net. We gotta talk about that. Now, Hutch says, you, you're back. Now, we see Nightwing lands in this, on the ground, around, with all these robbers surrounding him, but the robbers on the ground defeat it. Now, Nightwing says, Nightwing. And Hutch says, wow, pleased to meet you, I'm Hutch. And that's when Nightwing kicks this robber in the face and says, you and your team did a great job of handling things in my absence. Now Hutch says, really? You think so? And Nightwing says, definitely, and I thank you for all you did. But I'm back, for good, which means the time has come to meet the others. Now we see Hutch and Nightwing in this warehouse with the other three Nightwings. Now, Hutch says, let me introduce you to Team Nightwing, Colleen Edwards, her brother Zack, and Detective Sap, for short. And then that's what Colleen says, so you're the man, where have you been, why did you quit? And Nightwing says, quit is no right word, let's just say it was a medical issue and leave it at that, I'm good to go now. Now, Sap says, and we're supposed to stand down because you're suddenly on the sea again? And Nightwing says, no, do it for your own safety, and before one you gets killed. Nightwing continues, I'm as experienced as it gets, and even I was nearly taken out by a sniper's bullet. Took me offline for a bit, and it was dicey. When you mixed up it up with the Joker, he could have done worse than put you in a wheelchair. You're lucky to be alive, Detective. That's when Nightwing puts his hand on the Detective Sap's shoulder. So guys, you remember, Detective Sap, he went against the Joker, and Joker put him in a wheelchair. It was a pretty gruesome fight scene. Now, Nightwing says, or you, Zack, Talon left you dead. Yep, that's when we had Talon back in that whole Core of House storyline when Talon fought off against Zack and almost killed him. Now, Zack says, would be if our cabbie friend, Rick Grayson, didn't get me to the hospital. Now, Colleen says, you're a point here, and Nightwing says, this is dangerous, dangerous business as you experience. What Bloodhaven really needs are the best cops and firefighters it can, it, it can get its hands on, which are you. Now, he stands in front of these, this Team Nightwing and says, you're a lifesaver, Hutch. You should be a firefighter. The rest of you are remarkable police officers, decorated and recognized for your bravery and fairness. Leave the really deadly stuff to uh, guys like me, please. Now, Hutch says, I hear you, brother, but the fact is, I like this. I'm giving it away that I can't from a fire truck. And that's what Nightwing says, there are all sorts of ways to serve and be a hero, Hutch. Going to an inferno to save people, man, it doesn't get any better. It's something I admire about you. Now, the detective says, he's right. I pulled all you into this, okay? I know that now that it was a mistake. We, we weren't ready. Let's leave it at that. We'll stand down, you take over, and remember that if you ever need help, we're here. And now he walks away with a thumbs up and says, that's the deal, detective. So in a matter of a couple pages, Nightwing just dismantled the whole Team Nightwing thing. So we're done with that, but the real Nightwing is back in business. Now, Nightwing starts going off the rooftops, and he starts to make it to this bar. And he says, good to have that taken care of. Their hearts were in the right place, but I need them to be safe. Nice that there's no one around makes it easier to go and talk. Now we see Beatrice. She says, well, I've been waiting. And she says, nice, look, tired than your last getup. Now Nightwing says, glad you approved, uh, Beatrice. Surprised to find you up so late. And Beatrice says, I knew you'd come eventually. What do I call you now? I assume Rick is off the table. And that's what Dick says. Yeah, it, it, it's Dick now. That's my real name. 
Now, Beat Your Sess, your memory is really back, all of it. And Dick Sess still working out a few things. Our time together still a bit foggy, but it's coming together. The important thing is that I'm here. There's no reason for your run. Now, that's what we see outside this bar on our rooftop is the KG Beast. Now, KG Beast Sess, you. The commotion at the museum caught my attention and brought me right to you. Been following you ever since. And here you are, vulnerable, an easy target. It won't make the mistake of trying a long distance shot this time. Tonight I kill you up close, so close that I feel your dying breath on my face. Now, we go back to Nightwing and Beatrice talking. That's when Beatrice says, when I saw your memory return back to Gotham with Batman and the others staying there, I freaked out. All of a sudden, I realized you weren't the man I knew. You were an entirely different person, and I didn't know how to handle it, so I ran. You were my world, you know. In that moment, with all those heroic gods staying around you, it felt like my world was melting away. The stuff you do, leaping all over a city, beating up bad guys, fighting people with superpowers and all, that's so far beyond me that I can't see how it fit into it, Rick. Or is it Dick Grayson now? Now, she continues, it's obvious that your other life is pulling you away from me. To uh, the quiet, vulnerable man who walked into my bar just looking for a place to crash is gone. You aren't that person anymore. You're in the Justice League. You're in the Bat Family. But that's what Dick says. Uh, I'm not in the league. And that's what Beatrice says, whatever. And that's when Nightwing grabs her by the waist and says, Beatrice, despite my amnesia, when you took me in, I was still at my core, Dick Grayson. The, per the particulars of my past were a mystery, but I was still me. I am exactly the same man, the one you fell in love with. What I'm asking now is that you trust me and trust us. And she, and she says, so we pick up right where we left off, even though you said your memory of our time together is a bit fuzzy. And Nightwing says, yes, starting right now, this minute, we commit ourselves to meet us again. We. But then we see a bunch of bullets come through the window. A bunch of bullets start being shot from the KG Beast. And that's when Beecher says, what? And Nightwing hits her to the ground and says, down. And that's when Beecher says, someone's shooting at us. And Nightwing says, stay here. And Beecher says, stay? What are you doing? You can't go out. Now, Nightwing gets out, um, Ruma stands up and says, I got this. But that's when we see this table get thrown at him. He falls to the ground. He says, ah. Oh. And we see KG Beast, he kicks him in the face. He says, I missed you once. For that, I was Rick Heel. Tonight, I will reverse that by cutting off your head to hang you in my favorite pub. We see Nightwing on the ground. And above him is KG Beast holding Beatrice in his hand. And KG Beast says, as for this one, since you seem to care about her, she dies first. And that's how we end issue number 75 of Nightwing. Nightwing Hopeless, Beatrice in a Bad Spot, and KG Beast back for revenge. So guys, that was Nightwing number 75. And actually, this is a really great issue, right? It's probably the best Nightwing comic I've read in a while. A couple of years, alright? It's a really great issue. And I'm going to first start out with the artwork, alright? The artwork by Travis Moore is amazing. His artwork in the action sequences, the choir moments, like uh, um, pretty much Dick and Alfred talking. I was about to say Bruce and Alfred, but we've seen that in other uh, series, the main Batman title, which that was really well done by James Tynan. But still, we have like Dick and Alfred talking. Which like, let's actually talk about that scene. That was a really sad scene, all right? It was really well written. I really like how the uh, writer did it. Because, guys, throughout the issue, you have this unknown voice. We don't know who it is. Now, when I was reading this, I was kind of suspecting that was Alfred. Like, who else would it be? But when Alfred actually showed up, you see Dick at that gravestone just talking. He had tears going down his um, pretty much face. And Alfred's right here, there saying, hey, all I want is for you to be happy. You be a Beatrice. You choose your own life. You don't have to be like Batman. You don't have to go down that abyss. I really like that. Because Batman, he's like, no, if we're doing this business, we're being the Bat family, we're fighting off uh, crime, we're not going to have a happy life. And Batman pretty much says that in this issue. But Dick's like, no, that's not how it works. Alfred told me different. I'm going to try to be happy and Nightwing at the same time. I really like that. And guys, something really cool about this is in those quieter moments, Travis Moore, how he draws Dick Grayson, how he draws Alfred. Like, it's one thing to have a really well-written, um, pretty much, scene between Alfred and Dick Grayson. It'll really hit the emotional moments. But Travis Moore just makes it go farther. It goes from, man, that's really good writing, to crap. It's actually really good. Like, it's like, damn, I, when you're actually reading it, you're, you really feel it. You can see in Dick's uh, face, you can see in Alfred how he's talking. It's, a, it's probably the best moment in the entire issue, and Travis Moore just kills it. 
Now, before that whole scene, you see Diego teaming up with Barbara, Batman going against all these clouds, post-Joker War, and they both tell him, hey, put on the Nightwing costume, which I really like that. Both those scenes were really cool. Seeing Diego and Barbara talking again actually as their like, relationship, not like a, a romantic relationship, but just them as partners was really cool. And the whole scene between Batman and Dick Grayson talking about the Nightwing costume was really good, all right? Now, the beginning with the Teen Titans was see seeing Donna Troy and Garth, who is Aqualad, and Dick all talk, and Dick starts to see that photo of all the Teen Titans when they were kids was a really great moment for not only Teen Titan fans, but it's a great moment to open up the issue. So you're like, okay, so Nightwing really is back. And to see him actually reunite with the Teen Titans first, like, yeah, he reunited with the Bat family, but to see this issue open up with the Teen Titans is a great way to give service to Teen Titans fans. Because lately, over the years, Teen Titans fans have not been getting the great service. Yeah, we have certain series, but so many characters, so many Titan members get killed off. Arsenal, Wally West, it's like here and there. Like, whenever DC's like, you know what? We need to kill off a character that's going to hit an emotional moment. Let's kill off a Titan. And that's not the great way to do it. So see this issue open up with, oh, actually paying respect to the Teen Titans. I like that. I really like that. Now, the end of the issue, see Nightwing get the costume back on and actually meet the new team, uh, like the new Nightwings. That was actually a funny scene because I really like how the writer did. It was like, okay, Nightwing's back. Let's, let's push Team Nightwing off to the side. Like, he really got over with that quickly. Like, crap. Like, Nightwing met with Hutch. Hutch introduced the Team Nightwing to Nightwing. And then Nightwing was like, you know what? Just be firefighters. Be police officers. Go back to your regular lives. And there's really no debate. The detective sap, he was like, you know what? I got you guys into this. So, you know what? We're just going to go back to what we do. And Nightwing, you just go off, say the city. And if you ever need help, just call us up. Which sounds good. I like that they didn't try to make a big argument. Like, no, we're Nightwing, you're not. I like that they got over it quickly. Now, the end of the issue. The big part, alright? When we see Nightwing, it reunites with Beatrice. And Beatrice goes over that whole thing. Oh, I think I lost Rick Grayson. Who are you now? And Nightwing pretty much tells her, hey, we can still be a gather. And it's a good moment until KGB is come swinging in. I really like how KGB shows up. Instead of shooting Nightwing from afar, he shows up to kill him in person, up close. And the first thing he's going to do is kill Beatrice, Nightwing's new girlfriend. Now, that was really good. I like that. Travis Moore really made that action sequence look really cool. See Nightwing dodge the bullets, jump over, get up, and see KGB's kick him in the face and him to the ground. Made the tension really high and made the stakes really high as well and end the issue on a great cliffhanger. Now, KGB's, how his story arc or his character arc will be, uh, we'll see. We'll see a lot on this issue other than, okay, he's in Russia, he gets ridiculed, so his solution to that is, you know what? I'm getting really killed because I didn't kill Nightwing. So I'll kill Nightwing now by instead of doing it from afar, I'll do it up close. Which makes sense, but I think he's more going to be just uh, not a generic villain, but not a really developed villain. More just the first adversary that Nightwing needs to face off, so it puts this whole Rick Grayson stuff behind him. Which I like, and I'm excited for next issue. But yeah guys, overall I'm reading this issue, Nightwing number 75, a 9 out of 10. I really like it guys, it's an amazing issue, it has great art by Travis Moore, some of the best artwork on the stands today, and seeing KGB's back, seeing Alfred and Dick Grayson talk, there's just a lot of big moments in this issue that if you're a Nightwing fan, and you're a Dick Grayson fan, you're an Alfred fan, you're a KGB's fan, or even you're a Teen Titans fan, You'll really like it, right? So I definitely recommend this issue. But guys, like me to get a big thumbs up on your show. Make sure to subscribe to my next Nightwing comic review. I'll review Nightwing number 76 when it comes out. But for now, tell me your thoughts on this issue down below. Did you love it? Did you hate it? What did you think about the KGBs being back? And what did you think about that Dick Grayson and, Al and Alfred pretty much talk? That whole scene, that emotional scene. Tell me all your thoughts down below. And yeah, guys, thanks for watching and peace out.